did you ever have a conversation with Alec Murdoch about him asking you permission or even telling you about installing blue lights in his private vehicle? No, sir. I never had a conversation with Alec Murdoch. Um, matter of fact, I never had a conversation with anyone in my 39 years about installing blue lights in, in their personal vehicle. And that's not something that's done, is it, sir? Oh, no, no. When my dad became the solicitor, he had an assistant solicitor's badge. Right. When he passed away, I had his badge. At some point in time, you were asking somebody about two badges, and that was the other badge. I found that law enforcement oftentimes is friendlier when you're in law enforcement. So you considered yourself law enforcement? Uh, no, sir. I, I can't say that I considered myself law enforcement. So you were just using having this badge to your advantage and taking, taking license with it. Is that correct? You get better treatment if I got pulled over. I mean, that's, that's probably a fair statement. Okay. That, yeah, if somebody in law enforcement saw that, yeah, I'd, I'd say that's true. And you had blue lights in your vehicle, but it was a private, it was your private vehicle, correct? Well, it, it was the vehicle that I drove. It was a law firm owned vehicle. So how'd you get blue lights in there? I had them installed. Joining me to delve into the details and drama of this case are juror Craig Moyer, former prosecutor Lonnie Coombs, and court TV reporter Vinnie Politan joining us virtually. Uh, Vinny, how you doing? Excellent, Dr. Phil. Thanks so much for having me back on. What a case. And let me just, can I just point this out, Dr. Phil, that juror today that you have on, Craig, is, is so on point. I'm so glad we're hearing from him because he saw the same case that the rest of us saw around the country that were watching this. And when you get to that lie that he keeps talking about, the lie about where he was, Alec Murdoch on the night of the murders had a legitimate alibi for one hour, but it started at around 9.08 when he went to his parents' house. But immediately the night of the murder, when no one else but the murderer knew when the killing took place, the killings took place, he lied about that very specific time. He had to back up his alibi about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, in order to cover the time of the murder. So I'm so glad that, that Craig and the rest of the jury caught on to that because that tells you everything you need to know right there. Yeah, and Craig said it well. He said it was that Snapchat video that put him there and the timeline that that buried him. And Lonnie, you said from the beginning that the, I mean, this, the, the timeline was so critical. It was. I mean, the prosecution laid it out pretty clearly, but when Alex himself took the stand and he decides for the first time publicly to tell everyone, yeah, I was there. I was there just minutes before they were killed. I think that was a jaw-dropping jaw moment. And I don't think he would have ever gotten to that admission if during the trial, 10 witnesses got up ahead of him and said, that was him on the video. I heard his voice on the video. I think then he felt like, I have to admit it. And he, even then, he thought he could say, I was just lying, but he'd be able to explain it away and not be held accountable. But the jurors saw right through it. You know, Craig says, that Paul's last video at the dog kennels right before the murders is what sealed his fate. Now, everybody testified that that was Alex, and so he had to admit it, right? I mean, they could have gone into voice prints and all of that kind of thing, but that's what put him there, and that's what you're talking about, right, Craig? Yes. And everybody on the jury concluded the same thing, right? That's correct. And, uh, and Vinny, you're making the point, he had to cover that, so... And of course, he lied before he knew he was even a suspect. He's lying to the responding officer, the first person who will listen to him he's lying to. He also lies to the 911 operator. I mean, the setup of this alibi begins so early. And, and don't forget who else he lied to. He lied to his family. He lied to his friends, his business partners. Anyone who would listen, he told the same story. The story that, yeah, I was asleep. I wasn't even there. And once that is uncovered and revealed, then all of a sudden you've got to think to yourself, why would an innocent person lie? Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.